Hi everybody, I'm back. Um, we're back for round two of building a source converter. Uh, last night we put together this piece here which had a couple of flaws but it did end up working in the end and we got an old board up and running. Um, I didn't really talk about why you would want to build this in the first place I realized and that's something we should probably go over. So basically uh, there's a microchip in there that's um, a pro micro. It costs about three bucks and if you put this together uh, in this fashion with the SOARS uh, converter software installed on it what you end up with is a controller that you can plug an old PS2 keyboard into and come away with a fully programmable keyboard with full key rollover and um, the ability to program macros anywhere just like on a modern QMK setup um, but with a vintage board and without disturbing the stock internals, which is really kind of cool, especially if you want to keep your nice, heavy, original IBM cables. And um, it's just an amazing tool. Um, a guy that went by the name of Soar, if you don't know, um, was um, very involved on Geek Hack for a long time. He developed this software and unfortunately didn't release the source, and then one day he up and disappeared. Nobody really knows what happened to him, where he went, who he was, no idea. He's just gone. Um, thankfully the software is still available, but nothing can be added to it going forward uh, because no one has the source materials. So, in any case, um, we have some things to fix from this on last night. So, um, if you watch the previous stream, which I don't recommend because it was rambly and long and I'm um, learning to do this as I go. Uh, basically, we had some problems with fitment in this case. I overcut this so it ended up really short, so I'm trying to learn where the camera... F um, field of view is here and uh, nothing fit particularly well everything was a little bit cramped and um, a little bit messy inside so what I did was I came back I've got an updated case I made it two millimeters deeper to allow a little more room for the wires inside I fixed the positioning of the pro micro inside uh, what had happened was I had thickened up the outside of the case and when I did that my references to the pro micro over to the outside of the case and when the outside of the case expanded the pro micro inside essentially got moved and so I changed my references to the inside of the case and now everything is hopefully a-okay. The other issue we had was that the two LEDs uh, that indicate on the front here the, um, num lock and caps lock the one was brighter than the other and that kind of bugged me so we're going to start here by fixing that and what I've got is a breadboard with a little power supply on it and if we switch this on you'll see I've got the red and green LEDs on here and the red is substantially brighter than the green just like it was last night so that's using this they both have 220 ohm resistors on them right now which is what I had started with and theoretically the red and green LEDs take the same resistor value but mm, the brightness just isn't matched very well so uh, I just wanted to de demonstrate the difference and so I'll turn that off and we're going to pop out the red resistor and I've got one here that I think was an 840. I'd have to check the stripes on it. It was, it was mid 800s. And we're going to, I'm just going to bring this up, pop the resistor in. Sorry, it's hard to um, see it even for me being right here. And now when we flip it on, we have a much better, I, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the video or not, but the brightness is much more balanced. Um, they're both a, a nice bright LED, but they're not so bright that they're going to be obnoxious in a dark room. So that'll be really good. Um, with that, I think we're ready to start. And rather than start from scratch with another Pro Micro, I think we're going to desolder and salvage the one that we used last time. So I'm going to pop this thing open. And I've got the um, desoldering iron here with the bulb. Okay, I just have a manual desoldering iron. It's nothing fancy. It was like, I don't know, 20 bucks on Amazon, probably less than that. And we're going to desolder these wires. We'll scrap the LEDs and the resistors because they're, I mean, they're next to free. Maybe I'll keep them, but um, we're going to start with these fresh ones off the breadboard here tonight. And we'll reassemble this in the new case. The other thing I had to show was... I did make up a jig, and the jig will allow us to bend a nice, even connection between the inside two uh, leads on the LEDs, which are the negative leads, 
and we'll get a nice square bend on them and then when they're in the case I'll fold them down tight and they'll be uh, you know really nice and tight and organized in there and everything will look sharp so uh, with that let's get started um, I'm going to turn off the breadboard and pop the components out I want to keep the orientation of the components so that I don't get mixed up on which goes where so I'll just spread those out on the table here and then we can move the breadboard aside I'll just leave it here but we'll move it out of sight now I'm going to move all this plastic stuff out because the soldering iron will make short work of that if anything touches it and then we're going to pop this thing open if I can get it there we go and we'll set that one aside. So this is this is what we started with last night. And um, so we're going to clean this up so it looks a little bit slicker. And we'll start, I'm going to flip my regular iron on. And now I'm going to plug in the, unfortunately the um, desoldering iron is just a plug-in job. No switch, no control for heat. It's simple, simple, but it does work. I did um, my first test live stream was desoldering a AT101 keyboard. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't save that video. I probably should have, but uh, oh well. And um, it worked great. I mean, for a cheap little tool, really nice. So as soon as this warms up, we're going to get going here. Uh, I might be able to just get started with the the regular iron. I'm going to see if I can position myself in a way that I'm not blocking the view every time I move here. Hmm, probably not. That's going to be a trick. I'm going to have to come up with a better camera setup. Um, it's hard to keep the camera accessible or the the work accessible and still keep things in front of the camera um, uh, optimally I think I need something from the ceiling hanging down so that I can get around it uh, without getting interrupted this is feeling like it's getting pretty hot already yeah that's warm let's see if we can melt solder with it not quite yet Give that a moment. Shouldn't take it long. So once we have that desoldered, oh, well, you know what we can do in the meantime is we'll start prepping the components for the other stuff. So um, we're going to use the the other end of this cable that we didn't use last night. So we're going to chop this off just like before and tin the leads. I'll turn that iron back on. Can't make up my mind there apparently. And I'm going to be very careful this time not to over trim it. When I cut it last night I blew right through the outer casing into the wiring inside and that is definitely not what we wanted. So um, basically I'm going to lay this in here again and mark about where I want the leads to come out to and then I'm just going to gently roll this once or twice just to make a mark and then carefully come back and slice it being sure not to get too far inside there and hopefully we can break it there we go so I should be able to just gently pry those apart. Little wiggle it should come right off. Come on, there we go. So there's our our leads inside. Same four colors as we had last night, which is good. That means we don't have to fight with it. Um, we don't have to test everything again. Actually, that's probably a terrible idea, but eh. So I'm basically just taking the wire stripper. I'm going to knock the 
insulation off the ends of these about a quarter inch back, maybe a little less. And then we'll tin those. And that one just broke the whole wire. They're very, very small. So it pays to be gentle. Just a little wiggle and it pops right off. Wow, that one, I don't know if I stretched the casing or what, but I don't see any wire there. I'm going to do this off camera. Hopefully you can see it a little bit, but I need to be up close because something's going wrong here. I'm losing a lot of length and I'm not really getting any return. There we go. So that time we got a clean lead. Hopefully that'll be long enough that we don't have a problem. Should be fine. Yeah, see if you're not careful, they, they definitely, they're so fine that cutting them this way can break them. All right, so I'm just straightening these leads out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is bring the paste flux over again. And we'll just go ahead and dip all of them in there. Get the excess off. And one at a time, we will take these and just wind the ends a little bit like that. Make a nice solid end. And then we'll take our iron and just in that tip. Same thing with the next one. There should be enough solder on the end of this for a few. Maybe even all of them. Sorry about putting my hand in front of the camera. It's just probably should have put the camera on the left side since I'm right-handed. We could still do that, I suppose. Maybe we'll do that now. I'm going to sit that there and move you around. Try not to puke. I'm out of length on my camera lead here. I'm going to try and put it right here. And that way I can not only give you a good view, but I think I can work around the camera pretty well there. So, uh, we have our four tinned leads here. That's done. We can set that aside. This time we didn't trim it too short. That's nice. I'm going to move the good case out of the way. Don't need the flux again for a minute. And now it's to desolder the rest of this and that's going to be a trick this iron is a little unwieldy it's large we get it out from underneath the other wires there we go all right so let's give this a go sorry if i'm bumping the camera i apologize so right here we'll start with this one perfect this thing works a treat, really. It's nice. I should have a cloth here to spray this molten solder on, but I didn't think that far ahead. So you just put it down over your wire, let it sit for a second, and then release this vacuum, and the solder is gone. It's really working nice. If you get it too tight, your the air can't move and you lose suction. It's not a Dyson, I guess, right? And 
And the other thing you want to do is move that bulb slowly because molten solder will come out and hit you in the face. I'm just moving it off camera there to blow it out. Okay. That's most of the leads. Let's see if we can get anything free now. And I'm making a mess of things. There we go. So hopefully some of this will pull out. There goes the white one. I know this is very tiny and probably very hard to see. I definitely don't want to run into a situation where I lift a pad on this. I'm really trying to get that. I'm not getting any heat into that wire, I think. I'm melting the case of that black wire, though. Unfortunately, I don't think the camera's really focused, and I apologize about that, but there's not a whole lot I can do. Come on, baby. That's looking pretty good. The um, green wire is just about let go. Bending the wire back up. There we go. I think we got it. Yeah. Green wire is done. That black one is holding on for dear life, though. What I might do is just use the regular iron and try and poke down in there a little more and just pull it out. There it goes. Easy peasy. The, um, the pad is still filled with solder, so I'm going to try and suck it out one more time. Oh, I don't want to melt my wires. almost melted the camera wire there. Kind of crazy. The um, the holes on the pro micros are so tiny that basically the end of this is too big to get in there. I'm actually trying to blow the solder through it. May not be a bad idea, but I don't know. So not perfect. The, um, the cable has released, and most of them are clear. Most of the pads are clear. I'll get in there with the soldering iron once we get the LEDs off and try and clear those last few uh, openings. Um, I do have to do the other side here yet with the LEDs on it. So what we're going to do is get in that one. Come on, boss. Try the iron. Mm. 
Now see, the small tip I was complaining about last night is now my saving grace. Because I can push these wires right through with it. That's pretty nice. The other thing I'm being careful about is not getting the iron onto the pins for the the Atmega because if you jump those you're going to be in trouble. Ow! Ooh, that was a little warm. Play stupid games. I think I'm just about done with the desoldering iron. I'm going to unplug it. It's just a little dangerous sitting here near all this stuff we don't necessarily want to melt into oblivion. I'll finish the rest with the soldering iron. Okay, one is away. Two away. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Now. I don't know if you can really see, but we have a few pins here that are still filled. And we can just melt them as we go, basically. What I don't want to do is get to where we start lifting pads from stressing it. Um, the holes are clear, they're just filled with solder, so no big deal. So our Pro Micro is free, and we can start uh, rewiring it. And um, what I'm going to start with instead of the Pro Micro, though, is we're going to do those LEDs first. I want to see how this little jig works. So what we're going to do is take that. Now the negative side is the short one, like we talked about last time, and that's also the one that has a flat end. So I made these holes right up against this square so that it had to be the right lead and it had to be sitting perfectly square to the hole. I'm going to use my pliers to push them down in there. It doesn't matter which color is on which side. I don't really care. You can make it whatever you wanted it to be. The last one of these I did was blue and green. I did a one for a terminal connector, so an RJ45 um, for the old terminal boards. Works the same way. So now that we have that, the camera will focus here. I have to look into how I'm going to get this thing to focus a little closer. But we can bend these pins over. I'm going to trim that right now before uh, I even bother bending it over because we can see it's way too long. Trim it about there, and we can bend it nice and flat, like so, and then do the same with the other side. There we go, and what we should end up with now is two leads that are nice and square. Once we apply a little pressure to them, let's say. So we'll work them nicely down into the groove there. I might use the two millimeter groove, and that's roughly a millimeter deeper than the inside edge of the case they have to clear. So it should give me enough room to bend them over once they're in the case. I'm going to put a little flux on it. And that's a little bit more than I want. Right there. Like so. 
Now we'll hit that with the iron, see what we get. There we go. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. Now, will these pop out of here without a fight? Nope. Well, I got just the thing for that, right? I have the leads for the multimeter here. I'll take those. Pop those through. Gently. Gently. And what we're left with... Oh, did I melt that right to the case? I may have. Lesson learned. And... What we got is a now slightly bent. Let's fix that. Just straighten those out a little. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, you know what I didn't do? I wanted to connect the wire to the center of that before I took it out of there. So maybe what we'll do is we'll gently press that back in there. But essentially, these should be... Wow, that's hard to pick up. There we go. These should be exactly matched to the width of this opening in the case. Yeah, pretty good. Um, I'll have to bend them down and away from it a little bit. Uh, I think I over got overzealous with the flattening there when I fixed it. I'm going to take that off camera so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's okay. And if it doesn't work, I'll just grab two more LEDs and we'll try again. So. Are we golden? I'd say that looks pretty nice. So those will lay in just like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. A little bit of a tweak there and I think we'll be in business. Next time I'll probably make that block a little bit taller so we get a slightly longer pair of leads. And that way we'll have a little bit more give inside the case there. I think what I'll probably do is pop them back in here. I might actually just desolder them. Okay. Pop them back in. This is the stuff that makes it interesting. There we go. There's one. We don't want to stress them too bad if we don't have to. Okay. Get those leads together. And now we're going to add a black wire right in the center. I am going to use a piece of the wire we cut off. Uh, well, maybe not. I was going to say I'm going to use some of the same PS2 wire. But I think I'll stick with my Adafruit wire I was using last night. So I'm just taking and stripping the ends on a piece of 22 gauge Adafruit single strand project wire. And I don't know if that's even long enough. Mm, maybe not. I'm just going to cut a longer one and we'll be sure. And then we can use that other one for something else. Use it on the jumper for a jumper on the breadboard or something. Okay, now, what we've got is a nice little negative wire there, and we're going to lay that parallel 
I dip that in a little flux, get some more flux on there. I love me some flux. We're going to put it right there on top. And now we're going to solder that down. And that is it. Quick like a bunny. There we go. Now I'm going to be a little more careful about how I remove this this time. Where, where has my needle gone? So, we're going to gently, just till it starts to give, come on. Set a give. Ah, there we go. Looks like it's coming free of the block this time. Sorry, I'm trying to push this through, yet not stab myself in the hand on the other side. Wow, that red one, or the, now the green one, is in there. Come on, homie. There you go. So, that looks nicer. Now, what we can do is just test fit that again. So you'll see that lead can run right out to the outside of the case now. No problem. It'll run out to here, and then we can bend it down and in and it'll lay real nice and flat along that inside edge right up to the ground on that side. Perfect. Way, way more neat than what we had last time. Actually, I'll flip it over and do it this way so it's on the bottom. And that'll be nice. That'll be real nice. Okay, there we go with that. Now, um, the next thing is going to be the... Mm, let's do the PS2 leads on the Pro Micro. I'm going to get this other iron out of the way here. I think it's cooled down enough. And we can move our little jig since we're done with that for the moment. Next thing is to get these leads on. Um, everything should be good to go. So it was just a matter of checking our sheet again. Um, I'm just going to show it here for reference. So hopefully you'll be able to read this, but basically we have... Is this all backwards? Uh, my camera is coming through backwards. How do you like that business? I didn't even notice that. Sorry about that. I'm swapped left to right. Let's fix that. Yay, there we go. So what we've got is our ground line that goes on the, the one of the two grounds that are right here on the Pro Micro, clock and data right after that, um, five volts on this side, and then our lights go here. Pretty simple. And then for the pinout, um, just follow this, and I've the clock is the white wire, uh, green is the data line. That's all we need to know. So, let's get cooking. Um, now, I did, before, we did this ground here. I'm going to move it back to this one because it's a nice, clean, fresh pad. And why fight with it if you don't have to? Um, I'm going to get my helping hands in here again. And if you are wondering, it's got fuel tubing for an RC airplane on it, which is basically just um, some kind of a silicone tubing. And um, that works really nice for making sure that you don't damage things. It doesn't let the teeth... It's nice and grabby, but it doesn't let the teeth get in and hurt stuff. Looks pretty good. Clean that off. 
Sorry, I'm still using my shaky table here. Uh, I was looking at it and it's going to be a bit of a trick to make it not do that. I'm basically going to have to extend the back of it and then bolt it to the wall, so it's like kind of a project. I wanted to have that done before I streamed again, but it wasn't in the cards. Now, red goes to VCC on the opposite side. Now that's one of the ones that's plugged. So what we're going to do is... Mm, let me think here. Maybe hold the whole thing vertically. Or close to it. And we can heat it from this side and then get it in there. And then finish it off from the rear side. Ha <laughs> ha. There we go. Not bad. It's going easy this time. Shouldn't say that out loud. Huge mistake. And really, I've been watching the camera. I don't know what's in focus or what is visible and what's not. But, you know, I think there's a control on here for focus distance. Let me uh, just play with that once. Maybe we can get a better view. Oh, it's all the way, all the way down already. Okay, so that's as good as it's going to get. Well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping we'd be able to get that in there a little tighter for you. Okay, that looks great. Now, uh, white line is PD1 that goes on pin 2, which is on the other side here. So I'm just going to pull that. Pin 2 and 3 are right next to each other there. Obviously. But those are the data and clock lines, so we actually are going to be soldering right there. So, that's that one. Didn't really get much solder on there. What's going on here? Okay. Let's get number th three in there. That's the green line, right? I just want to double check data green. Yep, and then we go. And one more time with feeling, and we'll be all done. Keep that pressed up in there nice and snug. Solder flowed right down. Everything looks good. Now, um, if you can see this, you can see these are really long, so I'm going to take my little nippers and just knock those down. We can leave a little on there. I've got enough room inside that case now, especially that I extended it. So that's it for the PS2 cable. All we're going to do is get our LEDs done and we'll be in business. Now, all we have to do is make sure that the red, um, you know, and green don't get mixed up side to side. Where's my bottom half the case? Here we go. So um, the red is going to lay like that. So we're going to want to make sure that the red resistor lands on that side. So this is going to sit. Turn this around. And let's just check our 
darn fit on this. This should be perfect. I think it is, but um, last night it wouldn't fit at all. Tonight it snaps right in place, so that's perfect. It's staying put on its own. So when we put this together, it's not going to go sliding through the case like it did last time, trying to push out the back. And um, that'll be great. That looks perfect. So, so far I'm very pleased with how this case is turning out. <sighs> little piece of debris in there. And red will go this way, so we want our red resistor on that side of it. And just like before, and where do they go on? Um, they go on A1 and A2, which are right here. A1 and A2. Doesn't matter which is which. Since this one is closer on this side, I'm going to put red into A1. I'm just going to nip most of this off right from the get-go here. We don't need that much distance. And then um, resistors are not polarity sensitive. Okay, they can go in either way and it doesn't matter. So there's no need to get fussed about which way it's oriented. And I'm going to move that down in there. And then we're going to bring it slightly to the center. Actually, let me think about that. Nope, that's wrong. It should go right to the outside. Because we want it to clear the little standoffs in the back of the case there. So there's that one. I don't even know that I'm going to add more solder on it. I might do a little bit here. That's a lot. I don't want that much. Thank you. I like knowing there's a good physical connection because I tend to be hard on equipment, so if it's not, inevitably I will break it. That's just how my life is. Okay, now, one of the resistors for the green, since we had two of those. Um, this, I, I apologize, I see that this is terribly out of focus and there's really not much I can do about it. Um, I guess just get it a little further away from the camera. Maybe if I back this up a bit and tilt you up. Give it a little more vertical. Maybe that'll help. Now, let's get that other resistor trimmed and we'll get it in. That one crosses to the other side. So we're going to run that towards the middle more. And then once it's in, we'll fold it over. Hit that with a little paste. That's what I should have done with the last one. So we don't want them to touch, so we're going to bring it to the middle. There was almost enough solder on there to finish that, but of course not quite enough. Hmm. There it goes. Okay, that looks lovely. Now we don't want it to um, cross over these other lines. And what I did have, I've got somewhere here I've got some electrical tape. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and cut a short piece of this. And that way I can run that across the back of the board and it will keep it from shorting on any of the other pins. I don't think any other pins would really even matter because they're not doing anything, but I don't want voltage going backwards through any of them accidentally. So, grab my scissors, lop off a bit, and I'll just cut that in half, and we can put one on each side. And that way we're safe.
no problems. Pays to be careful, I suppose. So I'm just going to lay the tape over these like this. I don't want it going up and over the back because the back is basically fitted exactly to the length of the board. Come on, buddy. There we go. The sides are okay. So if it overlaps the sides, no biggie. So this one will need trimmed, but that's all right. So we'll run that up under there, push it down, and then we'll take this off and we'll just cut that flush with the pen knife. Where did that go? Right in front of me. We're just about finished. Two more connections and we're done. Most of that time I was just desoldering this thing. Starting fresh, could have been done maybe half hour. Mm. Give or take a little. All right, so there we have the soldering on the Pro Micro is complete. Okay, and we don't have to worry about shorting anything on the back side here, everything's good there. We're gonna bring this other lead right out the side like that. Now, take our case, lay our LEDs in place. And then we do have to run the ground line for the LEDs yet. Where's that other ground at? There are two here, there's one there, so we're gonna have to use that second one anyway. Wait, what? Oh, I messed up. We ran the red line to ground instead of to VCC. Okay, that was totally my mistake. Let's pop that out of there. Totally my mistake, like there's somebody else here doing this. We'll move that down three spots to the five volt line. Honestly, I wish there was a ground at the other end of this board. If they had a ground at the other end, you wouldn't have to do all this herky-jerky with the LEDs. Um, I want to see if I can get this vertical again. And just kind of work that through there from the top. Hmm. Doesn't want to go through there without some help. The, um, the end of the lead is trying to fray. I think I'm just going to take a little bit of flux and try and reflow that end. And then I'm going to melt that first. That's the way, right there. Come on. There we go. Took a little finagling, but we got it. How's the back side look? Eh, there's not a ton of solder, but it's, it's enough to work. I'll let it be, rather than screw with it and screw up the pad or something. And then, what do we need? For distance, um, I'm just trying to figure out like how long this black line needs to be to make that spot. And really, what I could do is just cut it a little long and then run a U shape bend in it. So I'm going to chop it right about there. Nip that off. Come back to my cutters and strip the end. Come on, let it go. A little short. Oh, 
There we go. Pretty good. Now we want that on the bottom side. I'm just going to do like I did for the red line and heat that solder in there first and then try and push this wire through. Come on you. Go, go, go. Come on. There it goes. Oh, we melted that casing pretty good and that won't matter, but actually mushroomed out. That was pretty cool. That one does need a little more solder. So I'm going to hit that one more time. Man, this does not hold solder. Honestly, it's not my best work, but I think it'll live. Get rid of these tall lens. Oh, that kind of stung. Caught my finger in the inside of the pliers. That sucks when you do that. All right, so I'm going to bend this flat against the other side and then kind of bring it back around in a U shape and that gives us a little bit of give. Did I do it backwards again? I suspect I did it backwards. There we go. Okay, now at this point we should be able to set this in here I want that black line to go out around like that. So I'm going to put it in place and then force the board to bend it. Maybe not the best method, but yeah, it'll work. And then I'm going to press the board into the case. Nice and tight. There we go. And what we're left with should be a happy Pro Micro and two leads that are pretty close in position for the LEDs. Okay, not too bad. This red one needs a little tweak. It's like kind of sitting crooked. There we go. All right, now all we need to do is connect these two ends for the LED. Just trying to get it to like kind of lay flat-ish against the LED's lead. There we go like that. I don't know if you can see that but it's... Uh, it's trying to move on me now. Should make like a, um, a top that snaps everything on but doesn't close it up. So like just like kind of pinches everything. That way stuff doesn't go moving on me. And we'll hit that with a bit of solder. Try and get it to flow out a little bit. A little cold looking. That's it for that one. Same thing on the other side. This one's a little easier because I don't have to trim it off to make the connection. Um, let me get in there with the pliers. 
because my fingers are too fat. And we're going to lay those together like that. Stay in place, LED. Just like so. Now, I'm definitely going to burn my finger on that, but it'll get done, so whatever. The soldering iron, it's like either you have a mountain of solder or none. It's not the iron, it's the tip. Okay, now if we're lucky, that should be the end of the soldering. Um, so I'm just going to pop this back out and we're going to trim off the excess from all the LEDs. Very carefully. Hmm, that connection looks terrible. Okay, the green one needs some work, yep. The, um, the wires are not even close together. I guess at my angle I couldn't really tell, but they're like not even, not even. Could use some some flux or something there. It's not not grabbing the wire like an auto. Just gonna try that one more time. You get that satisfying sizzle with the flux, and it really does work. Okay, so there we go. Now we can lay this in here, and we can trim that it off. Okay. That is essentially complete. Now, praying to God we didn't screw anything up. which is totally possible. I won't discount it. We should be able to close this up, not have anything touching, anything else. The only thing I was wondering about is the center post that pushes down right on the middle of the chip there. I have a post on the case that just kind of holds the Pro Micro from moving up and down. Um, that might need trimmed, but if it does, no big deal. It takes like a second. And we can just Put the LED in first. Oop, got it backwards. There we are. I think there, something has moved. The green one. So, mm, much better than yesterday. Right off the bat. There we go. Something's still not quite wanting to close up here, and this should be super clicky tight. When I do it with the case apart, everything is crisp and clean. Now, I did put it together once and open it again, which I may have damaged something doing that. So that may have been my fault. Or it could be that, like, this white wire is maybe interfering with the edge of the case here. Let's move that up and in. I'll try it again. It's mostly pretty good. And um, even the, the line out the back seems to fit pretty well. I'm not really sure where I'm getting a little, little argument from it here, but something's definitely wanting to push back. I don't know if 
I've got a piece of debris here. It looks like there might be a little bit of a jigger on the case there. When you're printing stuff, you know, the quality is, it's gotten so nice compared to what it used to be, but you still have to watch out for just little, little bits of plastic that'll get in your way. Like with something this small, every little piece matters. So if it's not perfect, you're going to know it. Oh, you know what it is? That center post is too tall, is what it is. It's pushing the whole center of the case up and out. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to knock off a layer or two here off the print. Not like that. That's all it is. And honestly, I'd, I'd rather have it be a little bit tall and trim it down than have it not be enough in the first place. Flipped it over again. There we go. Look at that. That's better. Hey, hey. Still not as tight as I like, but I'm going to glue it anyway because I don't want this cable moving. So what we're going to do is test it, and then if it's good, we're going to glue it and call it a day, and that'll be it. Um, we'll have a finished unit. Um, I do have that same IBM bomb of a Model M here, which I'm going to plug into it first like so and then find my USB cord hopefully it reaches over that far I don't want to take it off screen there we go and we'll drop that right in there it looks a little bit bent well we got a lock light that's good one lock is responding Nothing on the green LED. Now I'm going to try unplugging it once. Sometimes things get a little weird. But the green one, either I might have burned the LED or something isn't making connection there. So we'll do a little troubleshooting and get that sorted. But number lock is working perfectly. No problem there at all. So we're close. We're close. It's just about ready. Um, I think I just heard my phone, which could be... Mm. No big deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the continuity tester. We're going to pop this Pro Micro back out for a moment. And we're just going to check that our leads are where they're supposed to be. I'm uh, just going to do a visual inspection quick. Everything looks okay. So we're just going to turn the continuity tester on and we'll just check these lines quick. And maybe, who knows, maybe I burned up the LED with the soldering iron. I don't know. Could be anything. There's a million little things that can get you. Where's my lead? Sorry, I'm trying to find find the lead for the uh, multimeter here. Okay, so, okay. Now, do we have negative connection? Okay, we're good on the negative side. We're good across that solder joint. Now, am I going to the right spot on the board? A2. A2. That should be a caps lock, yeah. Um, it looks like it's soldered in nicely. Wait, am I wrong? No, that's right. Positive goes to A2. That's perfect. Um... Hmm. Did we kill our LED, I wonder? Or was something shorting? Somehow? I don't know. Let's plug it in. See if it works outside the case. So right away we get the, the numlock light comes on and functions. Caps lock does nothing. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the LED that we pulled from the other one. No, I'll just get a fresh one. I'll grab another green LED out of here. And we're just going to put it across there. Maybe I got the jumpers wrong. Like maybe I put the wrong polarity for the LED. See what we got here. So it should go like this. Yeah, that one lights. We got a bad LED. Something we did broke that LED. Um, so clearly this works fine if I hit it with caps lock, no problem. Everything's blinky. So we're cool, we just gotta replace that LED. That LED is LED dead. But the good news is we can use the existing one as a template for the bends and that way this will be very quick to to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and desolder that. Get him off there. Now, looking at it, and I had it you can uh, you can actually see that it's burned out inside. Something I did nuked it. So basically, and I just dropped the new one, get another one, I'll find that later. I'm just going to take that, try and match up the depth of the bend. Sorry, I'm doing this close up because my, my glasses are shot and I'm in dire need of new ones. And uh, I'm just going to bend that down like so. and cut it to approximately the same length as before. So we will hold him up. You'll be able to see the two here. And we'll just get in there and trim that off right about even with our first one. Right about there. The other one we'll do after we connect this negative lead. So, I'm going to hit it with a little flux just to make sure we get a good connection on the first try and we're not putting too much heat into it. That's probably all it is. I probably got too much heat into it. It's easy to fry LEDs. They are really relatively kind of delicate. There's plenty of solder on the iron and on the wires. Actually, I wish there was a little less. There we go. Just let that, and that didn't do so hot. A little too less. Okay, we got that. Should be good to just kind of eyeball this. Uh, there's enough give in it that I'm not too worried about it moving on me. Again, we're going to hit it with just, wow, that's a lot of flux. Okay, I just wanted a little, little bit like that. And try this one more time. That's hot. But I got it. Okay. Now, can I trim that without cutting the one below it? I 
does it matter? I'm not sure it does. I'll just let it alone. Simple is more better, right? So, we're going to get the bottom case again. Where'd it go? Here it is. We're going to bring these wires up and over. And get that Pro Micro seated again. And hopefully, things still basically line up here. So far, so good. There we go. Get the red one in place, green one in place. Everybody's happy. Get this in here and get the top on it. And we'll give this another go. Now, I just jinxed myself because I didn't test it with it apart. Okay, but oh well. Let's try it. Hey, we got lights. There we go. I'm going to turn this camera a little bit so you can see. So, there's our lights. You can see everything is working properly. Numb lock on and off. Caps lock on and off. And with them both on, they are pretty nicely balanced. I still feel like the red is slightly brighter. It might just be the way it reflects off the plastic more. And um, But it's definitely better than it was yesterday. Um, it was like a really super obvious difference between the two. That's great. There we have it. There's a proper working unit. Um, it looks nice. I, I'm going to reprint the top case. There's a little bit of a booger here on this one and that'll bother me even though it's completely not a functional issue. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this off. I'm going to disconnect the keyboard. And get my super glue. And what I like to use there, I'm going to use medium viscosity. Um, what I like is this Jet, Jet brand, Super Jet. And I have their uh, matching Jet set which is an instant, um, what do you call it, accelerant, so it sets immediately. Uh, we're just going to put one dot here under this. I'm using medium so it doesn't slime up everything and slide all over the place. A little bit on each corner, and I mean a little, you don't need any more than that. And then we'll get this back in place. Close that up nice and tight. And I might just hold it. Mm. I can hit it with the jet set here. That little bit of chemical, just the, the vapors get in there and we'll take care of it. Except I'm lying and it's not working. So we will take a little more glue, hold it right up to that hinge, or gap, whatever you want to call it, put that together, and just give it a second. That'll, that'll take quickly. come back and do the same thing at this end here.
hold. Oh, that was way too much. Like, way, way too much. I don't have any paper towel handy either. Grab those. There's one laying loose. Well, that's never coming apart, right? And that's pretty much it. We'll just hold that for 30 seconds or so and everything will be hunky dory. I don't know why I'm saying that a lot lately. It's the dumbest phrase. I have no idea. Don't judge me. Okay. That is a completed storage converter for a PS2 keyboard. I hope um, you learned something watching this. I have no idea, but um, if you have any questions, be you know, hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And um, you know, I'll be back. Next video we're going to do is probably uh, I'll show you how to program one of these things. Uh, we'll do it at my desktop machine upstairs, and and. Um, I'll show you how on Windows and maybe on Linux as well, and we'll go through the whole process uh, from the beginning, and that way, uh, if you've never done this before, there's so many instructions out there and they're so complicated, and it really doesn't need to be that hard at all. So we're going to do a simplified, like, like one minute flash your chip and you're done. This is how you put your hex file on. That's it. So that's the going to be the next thing. Um, thanks for watching. and. I'll uh, hopefully see you again soon.